Welcome back to How to Cake It. So this is happening right now. It's the Rubik's Cake episode of How to Cake It. Oh, can we do some weird graphic where it's like... <laughs> I don't want to be in the frame. I just want this. Like, is it straight, Chet? It's great. It, it's uh, yeah. It's it perfect. looks great. <laughs> perfect. I think they're lying. We got it. We got it. To make this Rubik's cube cake, I dyed my vanilla batter yellow using Wilton lemon yellow icing colors and then I've baked it in four eight inch square pans. Once my cakes are out of their pans and leveled, I take one of those cakes and layer it into three equal slices. Because I need my Rubik's Cube cake to be a perfect square, I need each one of my three remaining cakes to be a little bit higher. So I'm gonna add one of the layers from my fourth cake to each one of my three cakes to make them each higher. I do this using my Italian meringue buttercream. I dye it yellow using the same Wilton lemon yellow. Now all three of my cakes are two inches high and I'm gonna cut them into logs that are two inches wide. I actually made myself a template. This is two inches. In the end, I'll have nine logs that are two by two inches. It is a little bit complicated, much like solving a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Can you two solve a Rubik's Cube? No, I can't. No, I cannot. Okay. The fun with mathematics is not over yet, kids. Because all of my logs are two inches wide by two inches high, three of them add up to being six inches wide. That's right, right, right? So I need to cut them all six inches long so that when I stack all my logs together, they will end up in a perfect cube. Should I come back there? No. It's fine. No, it's, it's good. This is my show. It's how to kick it with Yolanda Gap and Sci-Fi Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Dee -doo -dee. <laughs> to assemble this cake, I have pre-made black chocolate ganache. I wanted to mimic the lines you see here in the Rubik's Cube. And I dyed it using Wilton black icing colors and then set it aside to come to room temperature so it's nice and spreadable. You can make it the night before. Time to assemble. Start with one cake and sandwich three logs together by spreading your black chocolate ganache in between the three logs and then sandwiching them together. Now it's time to stack all three squares to make a cube. Here's where you can layer your three squares of cake just like a layer cake. Spread ganache on the first set, add another layer, spread ganache again, add another layer, and then crumb coat the entire cube with more black chocolate ganache. I need to put my cube cake in the fridge to chill before I give it one more icing of black ganache. Icing square cakes or cube cakes in particular takes quite a bit of time. You gotta get your sharp edges, you gotta get your corners nice and sharp. Did you get your edges straight? Of course I got my edges straight. What kind of question is that? I can't make a rounded Rubik's. It's called a Rubik's cube. It's not called a Rubik's ball. It's time to cover this beautiful cube in black fondant. I use four pounds of black fondant to cover all four sides of the cake and the top. My cake is actually a little bit shorter than it is wide, which does not make it a perfect cube. To make up for this, I'm gonna roll my fifth slab of fondant a little bit thicker than the other four were just to make up for that height so that in the end, I have a perfect cube. You want special effects again? No, 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 you're good. I cut a perfect line on one end of it, and then I use a set square to cut a perfect perpendicular line. Oh, I, I did pay attention a bit in math. Then I line that perfect corner up with one corner of my cake, and then what I do is take a ruler and a very sharp knife to trim the other two sides to match the cube. Now I have one gorgeous big black cube. The only problem is it's naked. We've got a Rubik's it up. 
This must be why I like posting on Instagram so much, because all of the pictures are arranged like a cube. I begin by marking the grid between the colors so that there's nine sections on every side and the top of the cube. Now it is time to roll out every color of fondant on the Rubik's Cube, which is white, yellow, orange, red, blue, and green. Now I need to cut each color of fondant into nine squares. I actually don't need nine because we're not gonna see the bottom side, but I'm just gonna cut nine. So when I cut my colored fondant, I made sure to cut the squares a little bit smaller than the squares on the grid so that I would have a black border running all the way around. You may be able to use a square cutter if the size works out perfectly, or you might need to make yourself a template. It's really easy to make. Should I do sci-fi with my template? No, no. Imagine I could perfectly like, can I try that? Yes. It's not gonna work, because I suck at throwing. Ready? Okay, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> to apply my squares of fondant to my Rubik's Cube cake, I just use a little bit of water with a paintbrush. Just let me try one more time, okay? I'm gonna hit the bullseye. What the, is there wind in here? All I need to solve my Rubik's Cube is a knife. Remember how it was all yellow, all nine cubes were yellow? Now you're getting it. You can only solve one side of the cube with a knife, but I'm, I'm ready to work with that. That's good enough for me. This has been another Cubetastic episode of How to Cube It. If you like this video, give me a cubes up. Uh, leave a cubant below, sub sub subscribe, I couldn't do that, subscribe, but most importantly, come back next Cubes Day. Guys, I need your cube puns below. Yeah, I, I'm good with cake puns. Cube puns, not as good. <laughs>